So what is research question? Research question is an uncertainty or data need about something in the population that the investigator wants to resolve by making measurements in the study population. Now, why we need a clear research question? We need a clear research question to choose the most optimal study design and to identify the study participant. That means who should be included in the study to identify the study outcomes, what outcomes should be and finally when the outcomes need to be measured right so if your issue question is wrong no work will uh, be fruitful and if it is right uh, you have an opportunity to do a good job so let us look at some questions uh, a clear research question is required in order to facilitate the following to choose an optimal study design to identify the outcome that's need to be measured to decide when the outcomes need to be measured and all of the above yes it is all of the above we need clear research questions so that we can choose a better study design we can identify uh, study participants we can identify what are the outcomes and we can even decide when outcomes need to be measured uh, second question a clear research question facilitates to do the following choose most optimal study design identify who should be included as study population and specify the outcomes that should be measured and all of the above so obviously the answer is all of the above next question is a research question states about what uh, the results of study might ultimately contribute to that particular field of science so it is false Research question uh, will not state uh, about the results of the study finding because that is yet to come, right? Now, uh, we would like to understand that how we can translate the data needs or uncertainty into the research question. Research question is all about refining your ideas into a systematic process of framing a question. And it obviously begins with data needs or general uncertainty about a health issue. And we narrow it down and make a concrete researchable issue. So first of all, uh, there are few things that we have to keep in mind. So to translate uncertainty to research question, uh, we have to frame the problem in specific terms, right? So specific terminology is required. Second, we should focus one issue at a time. Third, uh, write the question in everyday language so that it is easily understandable. Fourth, use not more than one operational verb, right? And fifth, link the question to the potential action that would be taken once the question is answered. That means once you find out about uh, what you want to find out and then what will you do next that you have to be ready with. And finally state this thing as a question a research question sets out clearly what the investigator wants to know and definitely not what he or she may do or what this result will ultimately contribute to that particular field of science so let us look at this question the process of refining the ideas into research question begins with general uncertainty about a health issue and narrow it down to a specific concrete researchable issue and this is perfectly true because we will convert ideas into research question and it obviously begins with data needs that is uncertainty about and health issue and we narrow it down make it more specific more concrete and make it a researchable issue now let us look at what are the different sources of research question that means uh, there are many sources from which the questions or ideas can arise from so first of all uh, we can look at already published literature and we can uh, review the work of others in our area of interest so that is the first source second we should be about uh, be uh, alert to new ideas and techniques and for that we should attend research meetings or conferences we should have a skeptical attitude about prevailing beliefs uh, we should apply uh, new ideas or new technology to an old problem or old issues uh, we should keep our imagination roaming we should be very uh, observant so careful observation is the key 
teaching and interacting with students can also uh, a good way to come up with good research questions or ideas and you should have that tenacity to go to the bottom of uh, things finally you can even choose a guide and mentor who can help you to find a good research question so let us look at uh, two questions which of the following is not an ideal sources of research question so reviewing of published literature yes attending conference where latest findings are shared yes observing keenly in the outpatient clinics so observation keen observation yes it is a good source of research question mining existing data sets of research question uh, that is not an ideal source uh, uh, that will lead to uh, duplication of studies and that is not actually a good research question so I, d is the answer here source of research questions are published literature yes being alert to new ideas definitely yes and careful observation and teaching can obviously come up with good ideas so all of the above is the answer now there are two categories of research question we can divide them into a descriptive and analytical questions so what do you mean by descriptive and what do you mean by analytical whenever you want to measure a quantity for example you want to measure disease burden you want to measure the prevalence of a disease uh, so any study uh, which involves observation to measure quantity all those questions will uh, uh, will be called as uh, descriptive questions and obviously there will be no comparison groups or interventions uh, in such type of uh, research questions while analytical questions will obviously involve some comparison groups or interventions so that we can test our hypothesis or we can uh, put this research question uh, to a statistical test right uh, a single research study can be designed to answer sometimes both descriptive as well as analytical question however one may have to state descriptive element as primary objective and analytical part as secondary objective of the study so let us look at some questions which of the following is true for a descriptive research question it involves observation to measure a quantity obviously it is descriptive because we want to measure a quantity second it involves comparison group that is not true comparison groups are in analytical research question to taste the efficacy of intervention whenever intervention comes think of analytical research question it requires hypothesis testing again hypothesis testing comes under analytical research question so true statement only here is that descriptive research question involves observations to measure the quantity the second question state whether true or false a research study is conducted to estimate the prevalence zero prevalence of COVID-19 in Ahmedabad city during April to June 2020 and uh, this is an example of analytical research question uh, so here we want to measure prevalence so prevalence measure that means disease burden measurement we are measuring something so it is a descriptive research question it is not an analytical research question so answer is it is false let's look at the next question if your objective is to estimate the prevalence of a health problem in a community which kind of research question it is so obviously it is a descriptive research question so answer is b now let us look at various steps to conceive a research question so there are total six steps and we should uh, remember their orders as well as remember what they are so first of all review the state of art information from the literature that means do a thorough literature review read about it second raise a question based on that review of literature so next session is about a review of literature and then we will get to know that how we can identify the knowledge gaps and frame a new question out of it so raise a question based on that review of literature third then decide whether it is worth investigating this research question and you can take help of your peers or colleagues about it so peer review it right fourth define measurable exposures and outcome and fifth sharpen the initial question now narrow it down make it more specific based on the above step and finally refine the questions by specifying the further details so let us understand the six steps one by one or let us take an example for example we want to know that uh, should diabetics do exercise daily now let us this is an basically an idea and we will want to make it a research question so first step literature review 
so first of all we have to understand what are the effect of exercise on human body to begin with Liter when we do the literature review we found out that exercise reduces blood sugar level body fat exercise improves protection against developing complications due to diabetes so definitely it's worth investigating further so then we have raised a question based on our review of literature that can exercise help control blood sugar level then and then it will make sense that diabetic should do exercise daily so it sounds better than the earlier version so here we have to specify uh, further things for example what do you mean by exercise and what do you mean by sugar level so we go for peer review and we will decide whether it is worth investigating so then we go into the literature and talk to the people uh, and who are specialized people who are expertise uh, in this area and what is the level of reduction in blood sugar whether we should consider fasting blood sugar measurement random blood sugar or ppbs and what are the optimal time frequency intensity and duration of exercise and what are the risks and what are the benefits of this process and when we will communicate with our peers then we will come to know that okay it is worth investigating so we will go for the next step so what is our exposure it is exercise and what what is our expected outcome uh, that the parameter that we have chosen is fasting blood sugar level so uh, what we will call it as exercise so it has to be a predetermined physical activity uh, which is by any body movement produced by muscle and which will result in increase in energy expenditure so we have defined our exposure and uh, at least one session of 60 minutes every day for one year has to be followed out and we can even make it more specific that which kind of activity walking jogging cycling right and finally fifth uh, we will further narrow it down uh, based on above steps that among diabetics does physical activity for one hour daily help in reducing the fasting blood sugar level we will further uh, refine it in the next uh, step that we will specify the study population we will further uh, define our variables and we will choose the study design so what is the extent of walking practiced by diabetics regularly that if we want to do a descriptive study because we want to measure so we want to measure that what kind of uh, uh, at up to what extent the walking is practiced by diabetics but if we want to do an analytical study then we can go for that that in order to improve the management of type 2 diabetes we wish to know that whether brisk walking by di diabetics for at least one hour daily reduces fasting blood sugar level as compared to those who do not so let us look at questions which of the following is not a step in framing an ideal research question literature review uh, yes it is a step peer review yes it is a step broadening the initial question we actually narrow it down we make it more specific so this is not a step it is a wrong step uh, d defining measurable outcomes yes that obviously has to be done so answer is c here following are the steps in framing research question review of state of art information that is review of literature yes second define measurable exposure and outcome yes raise a question yes decide worth investigating by peer review so all four steps are mentioned now we have to choose the correct sequence in which this happens so first of all we will do review of literature then we will raise a question then we will decide whether it is worth investigating and then we will narrow it down and we will then define the exposure and outcome so one three four two so option C is the correct answer so what are the five elements of a good research question if you want to make a good research question then uh, this question has to pass so what test and this test comprise of uh, five elements and there is an acronym for it that is known as finer a research question should be finer so F stands for whether it is feasible or not is this research question feasible to answer uh, that means we will we get adequate number of participants do we have technical expertise to do this study do we have resources to do this so feasible that is the first one second is this interesting to answer interesting is the i stands for and does it really enthuse the people to engage in this particular research is it worth doing it third novelty is it novel 
does it confirms refutes or extends previous finding or it provides new information so research has to be novel research question should be novel e stands for ethical is it ethical to do the studies uh, that means is it a research questions that ethical committee will approve and r is relevant whether it is scientific or not whether it will advance our scientific knowledge whether it will improve the practice or it will influence influence the health policy or not so finer is the acronym feasible interesting novel ethical relevant let us look at the question which of the following characteristic base describe a good research question so f n n e so feasible novel and ethical a is the answer here clear cut right which of the following statement is incorrect a good research question should be feasible yes interesting yes novel yes ethical yes and relevant so final yes obviously it has to be a good research question should be in epidemiological terms we know that it should be in clinical terms right it should be uh, in public health terms right uh, a good research question facilitates to choose optimal design that is true a good research question will always focus on one issue at a time so uh, option b is the answer here it is an incorrect statement which of the following statement is incorrect about a good research question research question should advance scientific knowledge improve practice and influence policy yes it should be approved by ethical committee yes it should confirm refute or extend previous finding yes feasibility should not be a criteria feasibility is the first criteria uh, in finer acronym so d is the answer here all of the following are components of finer except feasible yes i stands for interesting and stands for novel e stands for ethical and r stands for not reliable it is relevant so option b is the answer here